It is my pleasure now to introduce our guest speaker, who's shown here in the uh, Peekskill Christmas Bird Count Gang here in December, uh, Arabella Pajuli, and she's going to be talking to us about the basics of warbler ID in the Northeast. So let me do a little bit of intro, and as I do that, uh, Arabella, feel free to start your screen share, and let's make sure she's unmuted too. So Arabella describes herself as a na nature enthusiast and an aspiring conservation biologist. She says she's always loved the outdoors, camping, hiking, and anything outdoors. Arabella began birding, uh, after meeting Charlie Roberto at Tea Town, after a Tea Town event uh, when she was around five, and she volunteered for her first Christmas bird count that same year in Putnam County. Arabella is also involved in the New York State Breeding Bird Atlas and is now the principal atlaser for the Saugerties CE Quadrant. Uh, welcome, Arabella. Glad you're here with us. Thank you so much. Um, like, thank you to Anne for inviting me. I'm so honored to be here. And well, honestly, I didn't think I would present until I was like way older. <laughs> so thank you so much. So picture it. It's a beautiful spring day. And there you are, out birding, when suddenly you see flitting about a bright yellow beacon in a tree full of green. You think you recognize it, but do you really? It's a warbler, of course, but what kind? That's what I'm here to help you learn today. First of all, let me just say, warblers are my favorite. They're small, and when they gaze at you with their beady little eyes, you can't help but fall in love. For those of you who don't know, warblers are insectivorous migratory birds whose origins trace back to South and Central America. Warblers are called warblers because of the way that some of them sing. If any of you are musicians or singers, you know that warbling means to sing or make sounds in a trilling or quavering manner which is of course what warblers do so beautifully. How warblers got their name is incredibly interesting, especially if you love language and history like me. According to Ken Kaufman in the 17 and 1800s, when Europeans came across birds here that resembled the birds back in Europe, such as the willow warbler, they chose to name these birds warblers as well. A hundred plus years later, naturalists and scientists realized the birds here were not related to the birds back in Europe, and eventually they corrected their mistake. Now, the warblers of New York and the rest of the United States are called either New World or Wood Warblers and are now classified in the family Perulidae. Here's a fun fact. Only in New York, 44 species of warblers have been recorded. Warbler identification is tough. Warblers can be difficult to identify for a variety of reasons. Many types of warblers share similar yellow and green coloring. Think northern water thrush, ovenbird, yellow warblers, trothonotary, yellow-throated, yellow magnolia, northern perula, there are so many. This, of course, helps them blend in with the green found throughout nature, but it makes it tough for birders like us. Think about maybe when you've been at Croton Point, you see a bird moving in the oriental bitter seat. You know it's a warbler, but it won't come out. What type? They're always flitting about, gleaning and foraging for their next meal. Their autumn plumage can look very different from their breeding plumage. Males and females can look very different, while juveniles can look very different from adults. Sometimes it can actually be easier to identify warblers based on songs, rather than looks, except for the fact that they engage in different behaviors at different times. And they are not necessarily always singing. <clears throat> Therefore, trying to identify warblers entirely by song won't always work. And eventually, you'll have to turn to their appearances. So what are some ways that we can identify warblers? We can look at one, colors, two, markings such as eye rings, wing bars, streaks, and masks, and three, as my mentors and Charlie and Kyle, special shout out to them, has often taught me, habitats and behaviors. I thought that today we could look at a few warbler species that we have here in New York and that we're most likely to encounter when we're out birding and apply the above. Specifically, let's look at yellow rumped, yellow, magnolia, blackpool, and bay breasted warblers. So let's dive right in and start talking about the yellow rumped myrtle warbler. I will only focus on the yellow-rumped myrtle warbler today, 
because it has the broadest range in North America. It's also one of our most abundant warblers in New York and can be spotted here all year round, although its numbers do increase during migration. So what do yellow rums look like? Yellow rum warblers are also known as butterbutts because of the bright and striking yellow patches on their rumps. In the summer, both the males and the females are gray and they sport striking yellow patches on the lower parts of the chest and the sides of the chest and they have faces that are white. Female yellow rumped warblers, however, they don't have as much yellow on them. Their yellow patches are not as striking. They lack the black cheek patches, as you can see in the photo below. And then they also have, they just have grain brown. And if you look carefully, you can see this faint little white stripe um, kind of going through almost the middle of the eye. And then they have white crescents, both above and below the eye. The juvenile males, they resemble mature fall females. And the colors for both the males and females, they become drabber in the fall and winter and the plumage turns browner. However, no matter when you see them or whether you're observing an immature adult or breeding male or immature adult or breeding female, you'll always observe that the bird in question has a yellow rump, always. So where can you find them and what's their behavior? Well, yellow rumps breed in large portions of New York, including in open coniferous forests, as well as coniferous interspersed with deciduous forests. In the winter, they'll visit more open, woodsy, and re even residential areas. Maybe some of you were lucky enough to see some by your bird feeders. They use many different ways to feed, such as gleaning, fly catching, and hovering. These birds are constantly on the move, catching lots of insects during the spring and summer. And in the winter, they prefer berries and will feed on myrtle berries, hence part of its name, bayberries, and even poison ivy berries. I'm sure I know many of us don't like poison ivy, but the yellow rums love it, so maybe try to keep some of it on your property. You'll generally see more than one together on an occasion, and you might even see several hundred flocking together. I've never seen several hundred, but during migration season in September 2022, I definitely saw a lot, I think, but my high has only been 20 or 30. So what do yellow rumps sound like? Their song is a trill and it has two parts. It's a very tough song to recognize and it goes something like a sweetly whistled warble or trill. They have two calls, one of which is a check note and the other is a pss. So who can they be confused with? Yellow rumps are often confused with magnolia warblers because they also have yellow rumps. But remember that magnolia warblers have yellow bellies, while yellow rumps do not. Now let's talk about the magnolia warbler. Despite the name magnolia warbler, magnolias actually prefer, actually, does anyone know what tree magnolias prefer? Anyone who has listened to my presentation is ruled out but just raise your hand and I can unmute you. Or put it in chat. You could ask them to put it in chat. Yeah. Does anyone know what type of tree Magnolia warblers prefer? And just put it in chat. Okay, now, well, magnolia warblers, they actually prefer sprucets, which is why many people will actually call them spruce warblers. The first one that Alexander Wilson, who is considered to be the father of American ornithology, captured, happened to be taken from a magnolia tree, hence the name. So what do magnolia warblers look like? Well, magnolias can be strikingly different between spring and fall. But if you see male magnolias, warblers in the springtime, you will probably know it. They're an exquisite black, white, and vivid yellow. The adult males are fancier than other black and white warblers with black neckties that look like they're being blown by the wind. And they have black side stripes, yellow chests, yellow throats, and gray heads. However, you do have to be careful because this necktie disappears in the fall. They also have unique tails. They have half 
black and half white under their tails. And the coloring looks like a T from above. And from below, it looks like the tail has been dipped in black ink. They also have white wing bars that are smushed together to form a large white patch, as you can see. And all plumages sport yellow rumps. The breeding adult females, they tend to be a drab olivish gray with yellow stomachs and green colored backs. And if you look in the bottom photo, you can see that they lack the black masks, although, which is apparent, they do, some do have faint necklaces, but they tend to have faint streaking on the chests and flanks. The adult females, they also have much thinner wing birth. And if you look very closely, you may need to get out your cameras or binoculars. They have white eye rings. The fall males aren't as colorful. They don't have as many streaks. They lack black face masks. Instead, they just have gray faces. They have white eye rings, small white wing bars, instead of large cluster of wing bars, and they sport green colored backs. The females, they aren't so striking. Instead, they're pretty similar to full males, and they have gray faces with simple side streaks, and they're drab and have olive on the back. They look extremely similar to the full males. So where can you find magnolia warblers, and what's their behavior? Well, these are somewhat active foragers, sometimes described as fidgety, who, when breeding, spend time in spruce, hemlock, and pine forests. During migration, you can find them in a variety of places, weedy fields, overgrown shrubby habitats, conifer and hardwood forests. For migration purposes, they aren't too picky. They do engage in an interesting behavior during breeding season. You can find the males showing off their white spots on their tails to attract females and warn off other competing males. So who can they be confused with? Well, females can be confused with northern perulas, but remember that perulas sport more yellow on the throat, but have yes, less yellow on the belly. Magnolias are also sometimes confused with Kirtland warblers, but remember that the Kirtlands lack the black neckties and stripes, and they have faint wing bars. And what do they sound like? So for their song, it's in their call notes, it's a slip. Let's move on to the bay-breasted warbler. Hold on. Bay-breasteds are not common in New York, except during migration. They're another bird that looks vastly different in the spring than in the fall. So what do bay-breasteds look like exactly? Well, the breeding males are grayish above with reddish brown crowns, breasts, and flanks, and they have black faces, creamy buff underparts, rear and rear cheeks, and they have black masks, all of which are apparent in the photo. The breeding females are somewhat similar, but they lack the black masks and have less bay color. The females have their own unique look. They are not vibrant and are extremely light colored with almost white underparts and gray backs and gray colored faces. They lack the black masks. They have chestnut sides similar to the males, with a bit of the cream on the back of their head to neck region, and they have light colored chestnut streaking on their throats. If you look carefully at the bottom photo, you can see that the chestnut is so light colored, it's almost like a pale pink. Both sexes have white, large wing bars and white spots on the tail. And in the fall, their bay colors are replaced by this greenish yellow plumage with white underparts. So where can you find bay breasteds and what's their behavior? You are likely to find bay breasteds breeding in New York. They tend to prefer the boreal forests and tamaracks, firs, spruces, and pines of Canada instead. But you'll definitely find them during migration season in brushy wooded habitats. One thing to pay attention to is that bay breasteds pump their tails like yellow warblers. But these birds are, they're kind of the lazy birds of the group. And they're lazy in how they forage, and they're a bit slower in their feeding. And during migration, they tend to forage lone shrubs in smaller trees and in overgrown weedy areas. They'll glean insects off leaves and twigs for food, but as I mentioned before, they aren't overly active foragers. But they do love the spruce budworm population, so when there's a large budworm population, their numbers pick up. So who can they be confused with? Well, they can be confused with pine warblers because 
but they actually, pines, have much yellower throats and thinner wing bars than bays. And then chestnut-sided warblers. But remember that chestnuts have yellow crowns and white throats, which the bays do lack. And then the most difficult is, of course, the black pool. There, it's a very hard to differentiate the bay-breasted from the black pole, but black poles, one good way to differentiate them is to look for the gray feet on the bays and the orangish, yellow, almost pink sometimes, feet of the black poles. And so what do bay-breasted warblers sound like? Well, they go, teasy, teasy, teasy. Let's move on to the black pole warbler. The black pole is our longest distant migrant, traveling approximately 20,000 kilometers from the boreal forests of spruce and tamarack, including those in the northern Adirondacks of New York, all the way to South America. During fall migration, they'll travel approximately 3,000 kilometers over ocean nonstop for approximately three days. When you think about the fact that this bird weighs less than half an ounce, this accomplishment seems even more remarkable. In New York, sadly, black pole numbers are declining dramatically. If you are lucky enough to spot a black pole, here is what you can look for. What do black pole warblers look like? Well, they're one of the few warb they're one of those warbler species that looks very different from the spring to fall, which makes them very difficult to identify. First, the breeding female. The breeding males are one of only three male black and white warblers. During the breeding season, the males are black and white with these little black caps, and they have white cheeks and black streaked backs and flanks, all of which are pretty apparent in the top photo. The females, on the other hand, they're gray. They're really light, and they have black and white, and as you can see, they don't sport caps. Instead, they might have a small bit of light green or yellow on their head or breast. You'll also see a dark eye line, almost going through the middle of the eye, and broken eye rings on the females that's apparent if you look on the bottom photo. In the late summer to fall, their coloring changes quite dramatically. Their bodies turn greenish yellow or almost olive, and their heads become light yellow. On their bodies, you'll also see white underparts and that have very light streakings. And then they have dark streakings on their backs. So where can you find them and what's their behavior? Black poles make their northern homes in spruce and tamarack forests. So as they migrate through, you're most likely to find them on evergreen and deciduous trees, gleaning insects. Although sometimes you might get lucky and find them on pokeberry and honeysuckle. In the spring, you can observe them in the middle and upper portions of the canopy. And in the fall, if you're lucky, you might find them forging near evergreen trunks. So who can they be confused with? It's very difficult to differentiate between black poles and bay breasteds. Both species have bold white wing bars and white tips on their primary feathers and white tail spotting. So how can you differentiate them then? One of the best ways to differentiate between black poles and bay breasteds is by looking at the bright orange feet of the black poles. They also have orangish yellow legs versus the dark feet of the bay breast warblers. You can also look at the breasts of these birds. If you see dusty streakings on the upper breasts, then it's probably a black pole. So what do they sound like? And extremely high. And then they also have a very high. Now, finally, last but not least, the yellow warblers. So, what do yellow warblers look like? As you can see, they're just that yellow. The males are bright yellow with chestnut red streakings on their chests. The females are not as brilliantly colored, but still yellow. Some females have streaks on their chests. Some are entirely yellow, as is the case in the bottom photo. And others, still others, they have large and thick chestnut red streaks. The first falls are light in color, and they have almost no streaks. 
One key way to identify the yellow warbler is to look for the large yellow patches on the tail, which is unlike any other warbler, and luckily for us, which both the males and the females swore. So what is the habitat and the behavior of yellow warblers? They're constant insect-eating foragers who like wet lambs and wet thickets, such as those with willow trees, and the edges of fields as well. You can find them hopping about on small treetops or tall shrubs searching for their next meal. They're one of the few warblers who like to pump their tails up and down. So who can they be confused with? Yellow warblers can be confused with other warblers, such as Pullman prothonotary. However, you can distinguish them from prothonotaries because prothonotary warblers have this large blue-gray mash almost on their wings. Although both the, both the yellow warblers and the palms sport reddish colored streakings on their chests, palms can be differentiated because they have chestnut red caps, which, as you can see, the yellow warblers lack. So what do they sound like? The song of the yellow warbler is sweet, 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 I'm sweet. And then for their call note, it's a sharp chip. Now, quiz time. So based on everything that I've mentioned, let's see if anyone can identify these five warblers. So um, you can either put it in the chat or you can just, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you. So does anyone know what the first warbler is? Don't be shy, guys. Somebody step up. Who knows what number one is? What do you think? Can you use the chat box? Do? Hold on. Uh, hey, it's, it's Kyle here. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm, dri I'm driving in Texas with my uncle, but uh, we're pretty sure the, the top left bird is a, a, a bay-breasted warbler. Okay. Why do you think it's a bay-breasted warbler? You could you could see some some bay coming in on the sides. Um, the light color is important in the fall. It looks like a fall male bird, probably. Um, and some greenish yellow hues to the to the top of the bird, opposed to you know a black pole that would look you know greenish overall, even down to the bottom. That's all exactly right. <laughs> And um, as Kyle mentioned, you, they have grayish legs, so that's a really good way to identify them. Okay, does anyone know what the second warbler is? Kyle, is your hand still up, or is it a new one? We got some answers in chat there. Do you want to mm -hmm. pick one, Arabella? Yellow. Yes, exactly, it's a yellow. Does anyone know why it's a yellow, though? That's exactly right, the chestnut red stripes. And as I mentioned, it's all yellow, beautiful, vivid yellow. So does anyone know what this third warbler is? Exactly right, does anyone know why it's magnolia though? You can just raise your hand and I can unmute you. Yes, those are all right. Because the tail tip, it looks like it's been dipped in ink and um, it has yellow on its belly. But the, you can differentiate from a northern perula. This is um, a female, but you can differentiate it from a perula because the perula, it would have this like dark gray, um, like stripe almost where the, like about where the gray goes to the yellow. And then, um, and yeah, it wouldn't like the iron, the coloration just would be different for a northern perula. Okay, what's the fourth warbler? Okay. Yes, that's right. It's a yellow rumped. Um, yeah, all of them right. And you know it's a yellow rumped because you have like that light brown. So this was taken in October. So it's a fall warbler. Um, but you know because it has that brownish and then you have the light brown right under the beak, like the throat patch. Um, and then if you look, you have some yellow by the shoulder. And this almost looks like a leaf kind of, um, or just sunlight hitting it in a weird spot. But if you look, see that beautiful yellow rump. Okay, does anyone know what the fifth and final warbler is? It is a black pole. 
And well, you know it's Blackpool because if you look, you can see those bright orange legs, and then you can also see like that yellowish head. Um, and then you have the black stripes. So that's all correct. Obviously, this was an extremely broad overview and I've only covered the basics. Not every idiosyncrasy one might come across. And obviously, I didn't cover every warbler species that has been found in New York. Still, I hope that this has been helpful. Thank you. Good birding, everyone. Any questions?